Here we go, week nine gambling show, the hard line, Michael Merlo, John Michael Masiri, here with you as we get set to give you our picks for week nine and go over some of the big time primetime games this week. JM, um, I'll give us our star count here. And I just want to say, you know, you shouldn't have let me back in this race last week. That's all are, I'm gonna say. Are you are you mental? I, I, I are don't you think you should have let me back I, in. You thinking you're back in this race is crazy. And the fact that it's even at a point where you were out of it and we're in week nine is very concerning. Nah, we're back in this. So Jam, what's your record again? I'm very sorry. You give your stars, I'll give mine because I forgot to read. I am name. twelve and twelve with twenty four stars. There you go. Okay. Now my record, it's not great. Okay. It's, it's really not great. It's eight and 16 with 15 stars, but we went two and one last week, going back to the bread and butter of ugly underdogs at home. That's what we do. And we're feeling great after that one. The Bengals, they're a bunch of losers over there in Cincinnati. They are they don't deserve yeah, anything totally. good. Dueling three stars last yeah, year. Yeah, that's crazy. That that was crazy. But either way, we're feeling good heading into the week. You know, it's funny. I'm looking at the board this week, JM, and the four o'clock games, there's only four of them, but they're much better than the one o'clock game. There's only one really entertaining one o'clock, maybe two entertaining one o'clock games this week. So we're gonna dive into the 425, the Sunday night football, and the Monday night Is, football. Uh... Game. One of those the one o'clock games you're referring to, Patriots Titans, as entertaining well, for me. That is entertaining for me. I will have money on right that because you are sick. Right, I'm a sick individual that will bet yes. that game. I don't know yes. what side I'll be on on that one. That's not one of my stars, but that is a great, great football game. That you oh yeah, be- the NFL should be promoting that like crazy. <laughs> that should have gotten flexed into the Sunday night game. You know what? There's going to be a time in May or June when you're going to be begging for that to be the only football game on. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. I, I just be just grateful. The, that's the game where I'm like, I would take any form of football, and then I refer to that game. Yes, that's exactly gotcha. what it is. I got, I got you. But either way, we're going to start. But I, I love the Jets on Thursday. I, I will not bet. This will be out Friday, so you won't know what happens. You will know what happened. I don't know what has happened yet. The Jets minus two feels like the right play, but I I can't. I would never put them in. They're on the band list. They've really screwed me a lot this year. So are they really? They are on the band list. Honestly, yeah. they're probably on my band list too because I mean I try to bet them as little as possible, and this yeah. year I've probably bet them the most that I ever have, and they're also not really returning the favor. So I've liked them a lot of weeks. This yeah. is they're a bad they're a bad team, but we know that we talked not about good that. football club. All right, Mike, we'll start here with the 425 game. This is probably the game of the week. This is better than any primetime Sunday night, Monday night, Thursday night. The Packers and the Lions in Green Bay. Uh, The Packers, three and a half point underdogs at home. Now, I think this has something to do with the fact that Love's, um, he's not certain to play. It feels as though he is going to play, but still, they're just trying to ensure themselves just in case he doesn't. Three and a half feels like a lot to give to a Green Bay team here at home. But again, I think they're including the injury. Yeah, you're including the injury. Um, you know, this isn't really like when we talked about back in week two and three with Malik Willis playing there where, all right, you don't really got to rush Jordan Love back. You could take your time here. You got two softer opponents coming up. Uh, Now we're in week nine, and this is a game that we could look back on at the end of the season, uh, especially considering we're in the middle of it right now, and say, well, that game decided the division. Uh, And and, and even more, decided the number one seed in the the NFC. That is completely possible. So uh, they got to do whatever they got to do to get Jordan Love out there. Malik Willis did a great job in that uh, span that he was the backup and started those two games for, for Green Bay against Indianapolis and Tennessee. But... They need him if they want a chance to win this game. Detroit's a really, really good football team. I actually just this uh, this past uh, I don't want to know, Tuesday or Monday put in a futures bet for them to win the Super Bowl. Wow. Um, also, I, I decided I've been seeing online like these people that have these like pro sports championship parlays where you know guy had the the Celtics winning and uh, Georgia who. Michigan 
Michigan winning from last year, you know, and, and he had the Yankees as his last leg. Um, hopefully, you know, he ends up cashing, not cashing out and hopefully winning. Hopefully cashed out of that. Yeah. He should hedge. Honestly, he should hedge. But anyways, I'm rambling. Uh, I decided to put together just a two-legger of um, Ohio State and uh, Detroit. To okay. Win. I was feeling, feeling pretty good about that. But my point is... Detroit's a very good football team, and if Green Bay wants a chance to win this football game, I think they need Tana Corbett. Are they close geographically? No, they're not. Eh, no, they're not that far. They're not that far. Detroit and Ohio State? Ohio State. Yeah, no, not, not that far. No, not too far. De- Detroit, Michigan, Columbus, Ohio. I mean, it's all Midwest crap, but I'm assuming it's pretty close to each other. Michigan's not too far. Mid. You know, I think right <laughs> now there are about six teams – Seven teams that I, six teams that I would say right now they can win the Super Bowl. You you, you want to see if you? Agree I was going to say you can't just say that and then not say the six teams. Yeah, no, I'm going to say the six teams. You want to hear them? How about this? Can I read teams that I believe should also be in that conversation? And you're going to tell me if that's included in your six. That's fine. Uh, Mike, the Kansas City Chiefs. The Kansas City Chiefs are one of them. The Baltimore Ravens. Yes. The Houston Texans. No, I didn't put them in that bubble. Hmm, okay. The Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills are absolutely in that. Of bubble. course, common Michael Merlo glazing of the Bills <laughs> moment. Um, the Commanders. The Commanders are not in that bubble. Okay, that's. I'm not going to hate on that. Yeah. Uh, the Lions. The Lions are in that bubble. The Packers. The Packers are in that bubble. One more team. I think I know who the last team is, Mike. Is it your beloved Atlanta Falcons? It is not the Atlanta. Wow. Falcons. Okay. Is it an NFC team? It's an NFC team. Is it the 49ers? It's the 49ers. Those okay. are the six teams right now. I could say I could see them winning the Super Bowl. Now, there's a couple of other teams. You mentioned the Texans. That's uh, pretty hot. Out. That's pretty they're, hot out of you to not include Houston, but include they're San outside. Francisco. They're outside that bubble. Philadelphia, right outside that bubble. Mm-hmm. By the way, I thought Philadelphia looked the best they have in a full calendar year. They did. Uh, against they did. Cincinnati. Full calendar year. Those are my teams, though. Those are my teams. They totally looked one hundred percent better. But Mike, I, I that Texans take is is a little too steamy for me, man. Because I what I'm, what I'm seeing out of San Francisco, I know there's been injuries. I know the offense. You know that they're, they're missing McCaffrey and Ayuk went down, and Debo's dealt with some stuff. And like you know, you still expect them to to be the 49ers at some point. But it's the defense, man. Like the fact that they even let Dallas back in that game last week alone was was bad. I mean, they were Dallas just seemed like they could score at will, and all of a sudden in the middle of the third quarter. Yeah. No, it's it's definitely interesting. You know, I was talking about this when I did the solo show and I was talking to myself in my room here. It was um like I can't envision like so this is weird and you might disagree with this. But I can see Josh Allen going to Kansas City and winning a football game like late in the year. Like I can envision that I think it's possible. I think with the way Lamar's playing and that team's playing I can envision them going to Kansas City or playing it in Baltimore and beating them. Mm. I can envision these things and then vice versa. For whatever reason, maybe it's youth, maybe it's not trusting the coach yet. I don't know what it is. But at the moment, even when they're fully healthy, I can't see the Texans doing it. I, I just think don't you just trust them yet. I think you just haven't seen them do it or do it enough, whether we're talking about Kansas City or just in general. I mean, That's you know, fine. they they were a surprise story last year, and then they win a playoff game at home against uh, a Cleveland. Joe Flacco led Browns team, and team. then they go and you know they're they kind of get their stuff handed to them in Baltimore. So, I mean, they're young; they're still inexperienced. They've got some injuries now with Diggs. Uh, you know, Collins is still on the IR, but yeah, I think they. I think you're as somebody yourself who really values the key pieces of a football team, being the defense, the left tackle, and the quarterback. I think they check all those boxes. Interesting. So you would have the Texans in your bubble. I would have the Texans in my bubble. No, San Francisco. I would not have San Francisco in my bubble. Would you have Philadelphia in your bubble? No, I still wouldn't have Philadelphia in my bubble, and I would have Buffalo out of my bubble. How? 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 Buffalo out of my bubble. You're crazy. It's Buffalo hatred. Buffalo is firmly not, in that bubble. It's not Buffalo hatred. They're not a top three team in the AFC. Firmly. They're, I think they're I think they're third. I think they're third. Mm-mm. All right. Um, we didn't even pick 
the spread. I would uh, take Green Bay. I would take three and a half. It's such a tough call. Three and a half versus two and a half is a massive difference. Um, you know, we love divisional home underdogs usually. And if we were talking about a, a, a game between two random, you know, AFC South opponents here or something like that, um, maybe I would side on the home team. But, I mean, Detroit is just a freaking powerhouse and Love's health scares me. If Love was healthy, I would take Green Bay also because Green Bay is a damn good football team. But I don't know. He scares me with his health. I, I think I think I'd have to side on Detroit. I think eventually this team since 2021, they're 43 and 18 against the spread Detroit. Okay. These are insane numbers. All right. Eventually they're going to come back down to earth and Vegas. They're not going to give you these favorable lines toward them. Eventually they're going to come back to the mean. Now they're a great football team. They have the ability to blow teams out. Goff doesn't play well outdoors. Goff, doesn't play well in bad weather, but they have the offensive line and the run game to make them as comfortable as possible and, and just, just run the football at yeah. will. Yeah. That's the scariest part about them. So it should be easy because golf is terrible playing outdoors, but it's not because they have the great run game. The defense kind of concerns me. I mean, they, they need, they're going to need pass rushers. They're going to have to trade for a pass rusher before Tuesday. Give me the Packers plus the three and a half. Plus I mean, the, the, the one thing I will say is I think that Green Bay will be able to slow down this whole Jared Goff completing whatever the hell he wants trend. Like, I, I think that they're going to give them a harder time defensively. They should. I mean, I mean, what's he comp- what, what's he completing right now? I'm going to pull that up right now. What is his completion? I, I mean, I don't know. The guy threw three touchdowns and only threw for 85 yards the other day. I mean, that's. Yeah, you know I'm saying is you're right. Isn't Pretty his easy. completion percentage like a crazy number? Yeah, I mean he's been he's he went 18 for 25. I think the week before that, the week before that he was 18 for 18 or something like. It's just been you know run 74 percent. Do whatever the hell he wants. I don't think Green Bay's gonna let him do that anymore. 140 for 189, 74 percent. I mean, how do you attack them defensively? Like you can't. It's easier said than done to just be like, all right, take away the run game. Especially when you have all the other, you know, everything they do is is so wet. They do everything well. Yeah. So you take away one aspect, the other aspect kicks in. You try to take away both aspects, you get in trouble. The only way to do it is if you just have really good defensive players. Or if you just control the clock and hopefully they can exactly. run the ball. Score first, you know, hope keep, they have a bad first possession, yeah. put the like heat keep on away. them. Like keep away. But once they get a lead, it's like, I don't know how you could slow them down. The issue is Goff. Excuse me. Love is great at times, but he turns the ball over. He does, and that's a problem, especially in this game. Yeah, but I'll still I'll still ride with Green Bay. Okay. All right, Mike. Sunday night football. Joe Flacco and the Colts against the Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota. That's a tough place to play. The spread's five and a half. Uh, give me Joe. I mean, give me Joe. Give yeah. Me Joe Flacco I here. mean, uh, how about how about telling you you know in August? By the way, uh, they're gonna take. The Eagles-Jags was originally Sunday night, right? Yes. By the way, they're going to flex out Eagles-Jags for Sam Darnold versus Joe Flacco on Sunday night football in week nine. Like, that is just so insane. Uh, That being said, Mike, I don't know if I agree with you here. I mean, the Vikings, I've been cool on the Vikings recently. I've been really cooling off on them. I said they were going to finish last in the division when Joe was on the show uh, about three weeks ago. I still, um, I kind of walked it back. After I said it to say, eh, maybe third place, because I don't know if Chicago will be able to beat them. But right. I'm still feeling really confident about that. I think Green Bay and I think that uh, Detroit are going to finish higher than them in the standings. I think they sh- they've proven now at this point that they're better football teams. Um, that's no disrespect to Minnesota, though. They're still a very tough team and a team that I would not want to face in the playoffs. That defense is great. However, um, contrary to all the criticism I just gave them, I think at home in a primetime spot against a run defense that the Colts have and the turmoil with the quarterback and everything like that, I don't know if this Colt I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily about Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco is great, and I don't have doubts that Joe Flacco can ball still. Uh, it's more about the rest of the team. I'm just not a big believer in this defense at all, uh, and I don't know how much of a believer I am in this offense to be consistent enough, even with Joe Flacco at quarterback. So going on the road here in a primetime spot after a quarterback change like that, 
I might have to take Minnesota with the five and a half. Yeah, I'm yeah, again, I'm gonna go on the opposite side. I think it's too many points. I agree with your concerns. I think they'll score. I think this is a high scoring game. Uh, I know primetime unders popular last season. I actually don't even know how popular they've been this well, season. Well, I th- I think it's I, it's been turning a little bit. I think the over's been hitting. Um, I know it did in the Giants game the other day, didn't it? Well, what, it, what, it, it was probably a low total. It was, it was 20, probably 40 and a half or something. It was like 26-18 that. the game yeah. ended. Yeah, so that's a 44-point total. Um, if it's anything like that Vikings-Colts game we saw two years ago, uh, that, that would was be great. really cool. That was a great football game. That game was Christmas Eve, right? Yeah. Uh, no, it was uh, – I don't know. I was at SantaCon, so I don't know what, what it was, but it was Oh, it was a Saturday game. It was it one was of those Saturday and December December. Saturdays. Yeah. It was like a week 14, 15 game, one of those. Yeah, it was one of those weird um, things. Yeah, but Mike, I mean the 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 defense of the Colts on the road, like it just that scares the crap out of me. They they still can't stop the run. Yeah. Um their defense is not their defense is is not very good. No. It's not very good. I've bet on them a couple of times this season. It's not good. I just think again, this offense looked so good with Joe Flacco running it, right? And they get into a shootout with Jacksonville, and they end up winning that game, right? In Jacksonville a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And you know, I just think like they're going to be able to score with this team. I do. Even Brian Flores, he's been. I mean, they've come back down to earth here defensively, Minnesota, but. I do think that a veteran quarterback like Joe Flacco with Shane Steichen running this offense, I think they'll get, uh, they'll score their points, and it's a high scoring game. But I think they ended up keep it close. They ended up losing that game, thirty seven thirty four. Right? They lost to Jacksonville on the road. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, just to quickly talk about the change, I think it was a good change for them to do. You're you're a four and four team. You're still very much in the hunt. Yeah, to make the playoffs here, the division is still in play. Um, you know they they've been doing a good job keeping their head above water, but Minnesota's on a bit of a skid right now, and you know their their schedule coming up is pretty easy. So if they if they would if they could win this game, uh, they could be right back in the mix of winning this division and being the best team in the NFC because you beat you beat Indianapolis, then you got Jacksonville on the road and Tennessee on the road. After that, they're going through the AFC South basically. So. They tend to trend in a way where late in the year, the black pa- I mean, I saw that um, the comparison to a, uh, I think 2016 when they started out five and one or mm-hmm. whatever their record was five and zero, oh, and they ended up missing the playoffs. So um, I don't know that this team later in the year, they scare me a little bit, but let's see what happens. I think they're going to win the game. Still. Mm-hmm. We'll go Thursday night, the bucks and the chiefs, a banged up bucks team who lost at home to the Falcons. Um, that my it's not going to wrap up the division, but it definitely gives the Falcons an upper edge here. Mike, eight and a half points. That's a lot. I'm an underdog guy. I don't like betting Mahomes as a huge favorite. Give me the banged up Buccaneers getting eight and a half. Yeah, it's it's not it's it's a big spread, and I mean you you look at the games that the Chiefs have played this year. They haven't lost the game and. I can't find a win of more than 13 points on this on this schedule. And 13 points is a lot of points, especially in the NFL. But considering that that's one game similar to the Monday night game against uh, New Orleans that uh, I had on my as my three-star back in week six or five, five whatever that yep. was, at five and a half, and they end up winning the game by 13. Um, I'm going to go with Tampa Bay. I'm not going to have it on my board this time. But I'm still gonna gonna ride the trend of they they can't blow out teams and Patrick Mahomes hasn't looked his best and this offense has still got concerns about. Um, but Mike, they just they can't seem to like put teams away as a as an undefeated team that's defending two consecutive Super Bowls. It's weird. Yeah, they listen. This is a team again defensively. They've been carried now and they put it together offensively. And I mean. They sort of did. They were handed a touchdown last week. They sort of did against the Raiders. They're pitiful, though, that team. That friend, that team is terrible, Yeah, the Raiders, even though I bet them at plus eight and a half, and they ended up having a nice backdoor cover for me. You know, when they figured, figured out offensively, obviously they're going to be dangerous. They're, they're going to be a team. DeAndre Hopkins didn't get involved at all last weekend. I just shipped him off in fantasy. We made a nice fantasy trade today, actually. We did. Um, business. So they'll get him going. 
Is it this week? I don't know. So again, it's just so many. Points. Dude, give me the got, back door. Give me yeah, the back yeah, give door. me the back door. And you gotta feel for Tampa Bay with everything that's been going on with them. Losing your two best receivers in the same game. Yeah. Uh, Godwin being out for the year and, and Evans being out for at least a few weeks. That's a brutal blow. And I mean, I'm looking at their schedule. What a what a terrible schedule this team has gotten, especially to start the season. Um, you know, looking back now, you had the Commanders as an easy week one game. And, and sure, maybe you if there was a time to play the Commanders, it was week one until they really hit their stride. But Commanders, Lions, Eagles, Falcons, Ravens, Falcons again, Chiefs, and 49ers as seven of your first 10 games is not very nice of the NFL. Uh, no, not nice. So, you know, you Bad drop boys. this game, you go under 500, and now next week you got to play 49ers at home. It's tough. That's a tough schedule without your top two receivers. Tough sledding. All right, JM, let's get to our picks before we get out of here, our three-star picks. I will let you choose who goes first because you're in the lead. Mike, I always let you go first, bro. Why don't you, why don't you take this? I go first. Okay. Yes. Sorry, I had my headphones. Like I was going to say, how did you hear that? With I did hear it because they're so loud. Loud enough. And um, like the pointy, you know, the pointy thing on the head. Yes. I, there's actually a name for it, and I completely forgot it. I learned about it the other day. And like the headphones were like stabbing it into my head. And it's like, oh, on the hat you're bit. talking about? Yeah, on the hat. That's yeah, the, the uh... it's a oh, funny name. Yeah, there's a name for it. I don't know. I'll look it up in a little bit when we're out of here. Uh, all right, Mike, my one star pick, ugly underdogs at home. I don't care what quarterback plays. Hopefully it's Andy Dalton, but give me the Panthers plus seven and a half. We love that against the Saints who will have their starting quarterback back. Derek Carr should be back this week, but still that team is banged up elsewhere. They're not very good. And the Panthers, listen. Kind of do here. Kind of do. Give me Dalton back. I really would love yeah. Andy Dalton to be playing in this game, but because Bryce Young did not look good against that. Of course not. Broncos team. I'm starting to really give up hope on him. Yeah. But would really like if this was Andy Dalton, but I'll I'll suck it up either way and yeah. take well seven and a half. That, that, that quarterback class is starting to look like uh, you know, CJ Stroud and a whole bunch of crap around him when it comes to yeah. the quarterbacks. Um Mike, that's a nice that's a nice pick, and I got a similar pick as my one star in terms of ugliness. I'm going to take the Denver Broncos, who have I think made their second appearance on my board, surprisingly, considering I despise the Broncos. Um, I'm going to take them as my one star, plus nine and a half on the road at one o'clock uh, against the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens had a tough week last week; they lose to Jameis Winston on the road. Um, you know, was that? The Ravens underestimating them was that the Browns having a a, 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 a new juice with the new quarterback. Who yeah. knows what it was? Um, but nine and a half is a lot here. You know, they dropped a game earlier in the year to the Raiders that I actually had the Ravens on my board uh, in a big spread, and the Raiders ended up winning the game. I, I just think it's too many points. The Broncos have proven that they're a team that that isn't just going to roll over. They've had some respectable wins and are still a team that in that building believe that they're going to make the playoffs. Um, and Bo Nix has showed some really nice flashes of athleticism and, and ability to play within structure with that Broncos offense. So I'm going to take them a nine and a half point underdogs, you know, not to win the game, obviously, but that's a big, big spread. He's looked really good. I mean, let's just say it. He's looked really good, better than a lot of people thought he would. I don't think this is an ugly underdog at all, at all. nine and a half. That's a lot of points. So, yeah, Mike. Good stuff. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate your support. Makes me feel good. All right. The two star was really tough this week. I I, re I know what my one star is. I, I mean, my three star. I love my three star. The two star is tough. Let's go with the Chargers minus the one and a half in Cleveland. I went with Cleveland last week. It's the two star. They were great. You just mentioned that game against Baltimore. They win the game outright. Herbert looked good against the Saints at home. He really did. Now, I think a lot of people are going to be all over the Browns now with Jameis Winston. Everybody loves Jameis, and they see the way they looked. Let's get Jim Harbaugh in Cleveland here with the better quarterback, probably the better defense, the healthier team in Cleveland right now. Give me the Chargers minus the one and a half. It's a public home dog. Fade that, even though I contradict myself, went with the home dog earlier. 
All right. Public home dog. No, we don't want that. Give me the Chargers minus one and a half. That's all right. I'm about to contradict myself too. Um, but I like I like that pick as well, Mike. I heavily consider them to be on my board, the Chargers. Um my two star, contradicting my one star pick logic. I'm gonna take the Philadelphia Eagles as uh at, at minus seven and a half, which don't like that number. I really wish it was six and a half. Might have had them as the three star if it was six and a half. But Seven and a half point favorites against the Jacksonville Jaguars at home. The game that got flexed out of mm-hmm. Sunday night football and into the four o'clock window. This is just a matter of the Eagles looked really good last week. And, you know, I know that it's really tough for a team to play their best football two weeks in a row. But when you play Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars and a team that just lost Christian Kirk for the season and Brian Thomas, who's banged up and, you know, they're, they're, they're being positive about his status for this week, but I'm so not so sure if he's going to be able to play. Regardless, the offense of the Jaguars is not good. The defense is not good. The Philadelphia Eagles are a team that is very well balanced. Um, They're home for this game, which is a big plus. The Jaguars look like hot garbage. It looks like there's going to be big shakeup with that team when the season is over. So, despite my logic of um, road underdogs with big spreads, for the one star pick, I am going to flip on the other side here and say that the Eagles are going to cover this seven and a half point spread. Give me the Eagles by 10 or more. I considered them just because this does feel like a blowout spot for them. I could really see them turning it on now. Mm-hmm. And this Jaguar team, you mentioned, they're terrible. So, yeah, I considered them here just too big of a number for me uh, to be comfy. All right, JM, the three star pick. Again, kind of drink, contradicting myself. This one, I feel <laughs> great about. I mean, I really feel great about this. I said two weeks ago, if this team won on Thursday night, they're going to be fully in the division race. And I will push back, especially from you, but, you know, whatever. It's fine. They win Thursday night against a superior team. And this Los Angeles Rams team is fully in the hunt. I will be correct from week one when I said they won the division. They will win this division. They will win the NFC West. Give me the Rams minus the one and a half in Seattle. Seattle is the definition of a fraud. They are literally the definition of a fraudulent football team. They will lose this game at home. I love the Rams. Puka back, one of the best receivers in football. Cooper Cup, his sidekick right behind him. Puka's the one in that offense. Cooper's the two. They're going to roll, and they're getting healthier. That's the scariest part. Their offensive line was the most banged-up offensive line in the league. They're getting healthier as every week goes on. This team is going to roll. They're going to roll in Seattle, and they're going to win this division. That that's a great pick, Mike. Uh, Seahawks can't make their mind up if they're a good football team or not. It's bad football team. It's really, really frustrating to watch. I actually know a Seahawks fan from college and was speaking with him this past weekend and asking him what he thinks about the team. And that's exactly what he said. He said, I don't know if we suck or I don't know if we're great. Um, Mike, I'm going to keep it in the NFC West and oh. uh, keep it with a team that is potentially going to dethrone the Rams of the division if they have their own say about it. And that is my three-star of the Arizona Cardinals minus one and a half against the Chicago Bears. Um, You know, the Bears, I would say, won a game last week and then didn't win a game that they were supposed to lose anyways. Um, They should not have even been in position to win that game. And I feel like the football gods corrected it by giving the commanders that Hail Mary there. Uh, Obviously... I think we could read into cliches a little too much in sports sometimes and say, oh, that's the dagger for the Bears. How can you come back next week and play a good game after that? Um, You know, I think sometimes we overlook things like that. But regardless if the Bears come out looking good or looking bad, I think the the Cardinals are going to win this game anyways. I think the Cardinals are on a nice little hot streak here, and they're just going to keep it going. I think they're building week after week. I think last week they found something with Marvin Harrison – I don't understand the way they've been using this guy in, it, it, throughout the season. They're, 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 they're treating him like a Gabe Davis type. Like he's the guy who's just running vertical routes, and they're not using him in a route tree the same way like the Giants use neighbors. It's It's been very strange. But finally last week they were able to do that and, and completely change uh, the Marvin Harrison route tree. So I think that adds another complete dangerous aspect to their offense. 
And I just don't know. I could see things going a little sour with this Bears team right now. We thought Caleb was on the up and up and he was getting better every week. And he played like crap last week. Um, I know that the Cardinals off uh, defense isn't anything crazy, but they've low key been playing pretty good. Uh, and I think that they're going to continue that after a big win last week against Miami. I think they're going to come out and win this game and cover the spread against the Bears. The one thing that scares me, I'm not worried about uh, Caleb. I, yeah. I think this is going to work out for them because they're probably going to finish under 500. And maybe they get fought. Maybe they fire the coach and they hire Ben Johnson, right? That would be the most ideal situation for them. But yeah. that Bears defense, like, is very good. There, it's yeah. a very good defense. So that's the only thing that worries me here with the Cardinals. I don't know if I trust them to play well against that Bears defense. I think with the game's in uh, Arizona. Game is in Arizona. Yeah. So that, I don't know. We'll see what happens there. But um, risky three star. Very interesting. We got risky. big cojones this week. We do. We definitely do. And you know and what? When I got, uh, you know, not to be arrogant here, but I'm going to be totally arrogant. When I have a big lead like I yeah. do right now, I'll, I'll, I'll start doing hook shots and fadeaways. Well, again, don't let me go 6-0. and up. Don't let me go 3-0 this week. All right? Okay. okay. And get six stars on you. You go 0-3. Okay. Then I'm what three I, stars behind. What if I just start mirroring your picks every week? Like I take a knee. Should I do that? Soft. You'd be soft. Yeah, no, I would. I'd be actually the, the lowest of low of human beings. And when I start taking the Panthers plus four and a half and the, the Patriots minus two and a half in some cases, Gross. you're going to say, yeah, you know. Yeah, know. yeah, that will, that will, my body will have an allergic reaction. You'll actually fade them. You'll fade I will. Them. What you'll I do will. is fade it. So there I we will. go. And then I'll win. See? Gross and disgusting. All right, that's <laughs> it for week nine. The Gambling Show. Make sure you're checking out our social media pages. Make sure you're liking and subscribing on YouTube, rating us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We appreciate the support, and we'll talk to you guys next week.